Hi guys, welcome to Scholar Sarah G.S. Philips classes. Myself is Pajuti Tatta, your faculty for geography. So in the last class, we talked about the formulation of plate tectonics theory, uh, where we talked about the mental convection cell theory and the uh, sea flow spreading theory, as well as we talked about uh, paleomagnetism. And in this class, we shall also talk about the different other dynamics or the uh, different dimensions which are associated with the plate tectonic theory. Fine. So we will begin this class by giving a brief introduction about the plate tectonics theory. Uh, then we, uh, then before we understand or go into the real uh, discussions of the dimensions of the topic, we will give a brief idea about the lithosphere or what is a lithospheric plate. Then we will be talking about the lith uh, tectonic plates of the world. And then finally, we are going to talk about a major topic which is called as a plate boundary interaction. So this is the major essence of your plate tectonics theory. Fine. Chalo, let's begin with the basic introduction of today's topic. Okay. <clears throat> the term plate tectonic was first used by whom? By a person whose name was Tujo Wilson and Alexander Dutoit. However, the plate tectonic theory was first published by W. J. Morgan of the Princeton University in which year? In the year of 1962. This year is important. So the terminology was first given by Tujo Wilson and Alexander Dutoit. But the theory was first published by whom? By W. J. Morgan in the year of 1962. Fine. So this theory is, why is this theory very, very important? This theory is important because this theory is considered to be an improvement over Wagner's continental drift theory and has been considered as the most sophisticated and comprehensive theory about the drift of the continents and expanses of the sea floors. Fine. So, what is the contemporary model in geography today about the drifting of the continents and about the uh, expansion of the ocean floors? It is the plate tectonics theory. Now, uh, continental drift theory formed the base of progression in the realm of geomorphology or physical geography, right? But the current model, which is the contemporary model, which one is it? It is the plate tectonics theory. Fine. Now, before we delve into the different dimensions of your uh, plate tectonics theory, first we have to understand what a lithosphere is. Now, in the previous class, I gave a brief idea about your what a lithosphere is. So, what was a lithosphere? Your lithosphere was nothing but your crust plus upper part of your upper mantle, right? So, this is a lithosphere. Now, if you look into this diagram carefully, this is the lithosphere that is the crust plus the upper part of the upper mantle and below the crust, we are below the lithosphere, we see another layer which is called as your asthenosphere, fine. So, we have the lithosphere, below the lithosphere, what will we have? We will have the asthenosphere. Now, what is the characteristics of this asthenosphere? This asthenosphere is considered to be fluidic in nature or semi-molten. And where is this asthenosphere present? This asthenosphere is said to be present in your mantle region. Just below the lithosphere in the mantle region, we have another layer which is called as asthenosphere which is semi-molten or plastic in nature, right? So it is said that the lithosphere that we see, that is the crust and the upper part of the upper mantle, it is said to be moving because of your asthenosphere, because asthenosphere is semi-molten in nature, right? Now, suppose this is the lithosphere. Here we have the asthenosphere layer, right, which is fluidic in nature. So, this lithosphere is said to be moving in the left-right direction. Understood this part? Now, this is a very brief idea about what a lithosphere and asthenosphere is. Now, uh, uh, we will talk more about it when we discuss the, uh, the interiors of the earth, right? 
Now, for this topic of plate tectonics, I just had to give you a brief idea. Now, let us look at into certain points of lithosphere. Now, what is this lithosphere? We understood this, right? Now, lithosphere includes the crust and the top mantle with thickness which varies from 5 to 10 kilometer in the oceanic parts and around 200 kilometer in the continental areas. Therefore, what can we say? We can say that the lithosphere is divided into two parts. One is your oceanic part and another is your continental part. Meaning what? Meaning that the lithosphere that you see, it is either made up of ocean or it is either made up of continents, right? And in the continental parts, it has a thickness of up to 200 kilometers and in the oceanic areas, the lithospheric crust is up to how much? 5 to 100 kilometers, right? Understood this point? So, how would the structure of the lithosphere will look like? It will look like a dumbbell. It will look like a dumbbell or it will have a dumbbell shape like this. Now, what am I showing here? This middle portion that you see here, which is having a very less thickness is your oceanic lithosphere. And this area that you see here, these are what? These are nothing but your continental crust or the continental lithosphere. Understood this part? This will having a this is having a thickness of around 200 kilometers and this is having a thickness of around 5 to 100 kilometers. Now remember, I also talked about density in the last class when the upper limbs of the mantle convection cells were meeting. So when the continents and the oceans were meeting, what was happening? The ocean floor was moving down. Uh, this means what? This means that the ocean floor is having less density, right? Sorry, ocean floor is having more density. So even if the thickness of the continents is much more, whose density is more? Density of the ocean floor is much more. So ocean is less thicker but much more denser. Continental crust or the continental lithosphere is much more thicker but lesser in density. Understood this point? Fine. Now the lithospheric plates vary from minor plates to major plates. Now I talked about lithosphere, right? Okay. Now, if you look into the birds of uh, birds eye view of the earth, now this will look like the, uh, now I will show you the area of the earth. Now, if I show you the top view of the earth surface, what is this? This is the crust, right? This is the top view. If you look into the earth from the atmosphere, it will look like this, right? Now, if you look into this part, this is the lithosphere, right? Now, this lithosphere, it is not uniform but it is broken down into several parts like this. Understood? This lithosphere that you see here, this is not a uniform structure, but rather it is broken down into several fragments and these fragments are called as your lithospheric plates. So, these are also called as your tectonic plates. I hope you understood this point, right? So, the surface of the earth that you see here, if the earth is viewed from your upper atmosphere, it will look like this, this structure that you see here. And this structure is not uniform. That means, the crust of the earth or the lithosphere of the earth is not a uniform body, but it is broken down into several plates, right? And these are called as the lithospheric plates or tectonic plates, fine? Now, uh, look at this point. Lithospheric plates may vary from minor plates to major plates, meaning what? This plates that you see here, if its size is more, we will call it as major plates. If its size is small, we will call it minor plates. So, uh, more the size, uh, it will be your major plate. If the size is less, we will call it as a minor plate. We will look into what the difference of major plates and minor plates or different examples of it, right? Now, these lithospheric plates are also broken down into I, uh, in a different category. So, the first category, how we divide lithosphere into minor and major plates, right? Now, there is another type of division of the lithospheric plates. It is either divided into continental plates, oceanic plates, as well as combination of continental and oceanic plates. Meaning one, meaning if you see a lithosphere, I will show you in the next diagram, in a next space because there is no space there, right? So, lithosphere can be divided into another uh, division also. It can be divided uh, in another category. First category is that it is made up of totally continental lithosphere, okay. So lithosphere can be made up of totally of uh, continents. It can also be made up of totally the oceans, but it can also be found in the combination of continents and oceans, continents 
and ocean all right so this is a continental lithosphere this is an oceanic lithosphere and this is a lithosphere which is a combination of both continent as well as the ocean right so how do we divide your lithospheric plates we divide it into minor and major we also divide the lithospheric plates into uh, oceanic plates into continental plates but as well as continental and oceanic plates right so this point is very very important now you see three different uh, divisions right continental plate oceanic plate and a combination of continental and oceanic plate right now if you look into the lithospheric plates over the world look at this diagram this is the earth right surface of the earth now surface of the earth is divided into different lithospheric plates this is l1 this can be l2 this can be l3 right now all the lithospheric plates that you see in the world mostly you will find that the lithosphere is a combination of both uh, continental lithosphere as well as oceanic lithosphere for example look at this african plate now in african plate we have this african continent as well as few parts of both the indian ocean as well as the uh, atlantic ocean also right now if you look at north america north america will have the north america continental lithosphere as well as your atlantic lithosphere as well right so uh, what can we say we can say that the uh, most of the place which is found in the world is a combination of both continental plate as well as your oceanic plate yes we also find place which are totally made up of continents or totally made up of uh, ocean but overall if we see we see that the continents are having uh, sorry the uh, lithospheric plates are a combination of both continent as well as your oceanic plate fine okay now let us look into some points the, uh, the third point states that the lithosphere is believed to be broken into fragments like i have already said right different fragments that are floating on a semi molten layer called as the lithosphere now uh, what is happening see this is the lithosphere below the lithosphere we have the asthenosphere and this lithospheric plates that you see here this plates l1 l2 l3 they are all moving left right because of your what because of the presence of asthenosphere now why because of the presence of the asthenosphere the plates are moving because if you look into this asthenosphere what do we have go back again to the mantle convection cell theory now in this asthenosphere what will we have this is your lithosphere above here we have the asthenosphere in this asthenosphere we will have the presence of your upper limbs of the mantle convection cells upper limbs of your mantle convection cells now because of the presence of the mantle convection cells what will happen it will move in the left and right direction as we have already discussed in your previous class right so this is why the presence of your upper limbs in your asthenosphere we see that the lithosphere is moving therefore what can we conclude we can conclude that the lithosphere is floating over a semi molten layer which is called as your asthenosphere understood this point so what is the last point stating the last point states that the movement of this place is attributed to the convectional currents being generated in the upper mantle that is a mantle convection cell theory which we have already talked about understood fine all right now let us look into some of your major tectonic plates so in uh, so what was the first type of division the first division was that the lithosphere is divided into uh, two parts major plates and minor plates right so in the world we have in total seven major plates the first one is your antarctic plate then we have the north american plate then south american plate pacific plate indo australian plate african plate and the eurasian plate and if you look into this place most of these plates are a combination of both continental lithosphere as well as oceanic lithosphere right so these are the three divisions and which is most commonly found the third one fine okay <clears throat> now let us look into some examples of minor lithospheric plates as well so this uh, can be important uh, first one is your cocos plate now where is this cocos plate found it is found between your central america and pacific plate then we also have the nazca plate which is found in your between south america and the pacific plate then we have the arabian plate which is mostly found in saudi arabian landmass then we have the aegean plate which is in the mediterranean region then we have the caribbean plate which is found in your southeastern part of north america uh, north american plate then we have the caroline plate which is present in your philippine and the indian plate between philippine and the indian plate then we have the fuji plate which is found in your northeastern parts of australia or northeast of australia then we have one the fuka plate which is found between your pacific and your north american plates and then we also have your iranian plate so kindly give attention to this minor uh, tectonic plates this might come in your examination right okay chalo so till now we have discussed about the lithosphere how it is divided into major minor 
continental oceanic as well as a combination of both then we also looked into the major plates as well as the minor plates right now after understanding the uh, division of the lithosphere the fragmentation of the lithosphere into lithospheric plates and the movement of the lithospheric plates because of your mental convection cells finally we will move into different types of plate boundary interactions plate boundary interactions means what the lithosphere is divided into several fragments right several lithospheric plates and how these lithospheric plates are interacting with each other or how are they moving in the uh, upper layer of the earth understood this point fine let us look into the first point what does the first point state it states that major geographical features like mountains mid oceanic ridges trenches volcanism earthquakes are a direct consequence of the interaction between the various tectonic plates or the lithospheric plates so all the mountains the moors trenches volcanism earthquakes that we see on the earth is because of this plate boundary interaction so the plate boundary interactions between what between the different lithospheric plates fine so uh, these plate boundary interactions that we see can be divided into three different types of interactions the first interaction is called as a divergent or constructive boundary or uh, interaction the second one is called as a convergent or destructive boundary and third one is called as a transform boundary fine chalo let's look into this one by one first we will look into is your divergent boundary now what is a divergent boundary the plates diverge or move away from each other this is a lithospheric plate l1 this is another lithospheric plate l2 so in this case what is divergent boundary in case of divergent boundary the upper limbs of the mental convection cells are moving away from each other and where is this upper limbs present these upper limbs are present in your uh, asthenosphere right fine so divergent boundary means what it means that the lithospheric plates are moving away from each other now again go back to your previous class in the previous class what did i talk about i talked about that if the plates are moving away from each other or if the upper limbs are moving away from each other what kind of structures will we get we will get mid oceanic ridges right which is the source of origin of what it is the source of origin of your continental plates sorry it will be, it is the source of your uh, ocean floors right which is made up of igneous rock and what was that igneous rock it was basalt fine so what is the first geographic feature which, uh, that we get we get the moors and below the uh, and second type of geographical feature that we get is your great african rift valley rift means what rift means breakage of your uh, continental crust or your oceanic crust or the lithospheric plate so when the lithosphere uh, plate is breaking down it can be called as rifting taking place understood what is rifting so a great rift is present where a great rift is present in your eastern margins of your african continent what is rifting rifting is nothing but the point where the uh, lithospheric plate is breaking understood so what is happening here uh, now where do we find this rift we find this rift in your eastern margins of your african uh, continent and it is called as a great african rift valley and what is the extent it extends from ethiopia in this area towards your mozambique area now if you see in this portion that is the eastern portion of your africa we see a rift here this is one rift we see another rift here that means your divergent boundary where in the red sea area which is also called as your red sea shift understood this part we see uh, uh, we see what we see one uh, divergent boundary along the red sea we see one divergent boundary along your east africa and then we see another rift here or a divergent boundary in your gulf of aden fine so in this point what is happening three different rifts are meeting three different rifts are meeting and hence this area is called as a triple junction understood this part so we get two different features moors moors we have already understood in the last class and second we get uh, great african rift valley what is a rift rift is nothing but the point where the lithospheric plate is breaking down because of the uh, moving away of your upper limbs of your uh, mental convection cell fine so these are uh, in the african continent we see three different rifts one along the red sea one along the gulf of aden one along the uh, east coast of africa towards mozambique from ethiopia and the point where these three points are meeting or these three rifts are meeting it is called as a triple junction fine 
Now next we will talk about your convergent boundary. Now before understanding convergent boundary, always remember a point that I have already mentioned that most of the lithospheric plates that we see on the earth, it's a combination of both oceanic lithosphere as well as continental lithosphere, right? So what is the structure of the lithosphere mostly? It is like this. Meaning one, this is the continent having more thickness and then we have the ocean, oceanic lithosphere, which is having a lesser thickness, right? Double shape, if you remember. So most of the uh, lithospheric plates are a combination of continents and ocean, right? So this is the structure of most of the lithosphere on the Earth's surface. Understood this point? Fine. Now let us look at the convergent boundary. What is the convergent boundary? In this kind of interactions, uh, two lithospheric plates collide against each other. Suppose this is a lithospheric plate 1, this is a lithospheric plate 2. In this case, what will happen to the upper limbs which are present in the asthenosphere? These upper limbs will move towards each other. That means you are convergent, right? Now, this convergent type of boundary can be divided into three different collisions or three different types of interactions. The first one is called as your OO collision. The second one is called as your OC collision and third one is called as your CC collision. Now always remember that OO collision will always occur first. After OO collision or convergence, we will get OC collision and after your OC collision, we will get the CC collision. Now what is this OO, OC, CC? We will understand in the next slide. First we shall talk about your OO collision. Now what is this OO collision? Now what did I say? Most of the lithosphere is a combination of continent and ocean, right? So suppose this is combination one, this is lithospheric plate one and this is lithospheric plate two. So below we have convection cells which are moving towards each other, right? So this is L1, this is L2. So uh, this is what? This is your continent C1, this is your ocean one, this is your continent two, this is your ocean two. So in this case, as L1 and L2 are moving towards each other, what will happen? Which two plates will first meet? Ocean 1 and Ocean 2 will meet or not. So the first collision is taking place between two different oceanic plates. Hence, we call it as Ocean-Ocean collision. Understood this part? Fine. Okay, let's look into the first point. Most of the lithospheric plates are a combination of ocean and continental crust. Yes, we have already talked about it. Therefore, the first collision will mostly be between the oceanic crust and hence the name OO collision, right? Fine. Next point. In this case, the denser of the two oceanic plates upon collision will subduct forming a trench. Meaning what? Now see, this is their first diagram in your chronology. First case, they are trying to move towards each other. In the next point, what will happen? It will meet. Right? Because it is converging, right? L1, L2, O1, O2. So in the first part, it was moving towards each other. In the chronology of diagram, now it is meeting each other. So in place of meeting, what will happen? These ocean flows are meeting or converging. As a result of this, what will happen? Either O1 will move below or either O2 will move below. Either O1 or O2. Now, which out of, which out of this O1 or O2 will move below? Uh, out of O1 and O2, whichever is denser or the denser of the two will move down towards the mantle denser of the two will subduct or move below understood this part now let me consider that if our uh, uh, ocean 2 floor is denser so what will this uh, third diagram look like if your ocean 2 is denser what will happen it will move below right understood this part where will it move it will move towards your mantle Understood? So this is L1, L2, O1, O2. Now O2 being denser, it is moving below. It is getting melted where? It is getting melted in the mantle or not? In the mantle, your temperature is very, very high. So as the uh, ocean floor or the O2 floor is moving below and it is moving towards the mantle and once it reaches the mantle, it will melt and this uh, melting or this magma will because of convection move where? It will move towards the ocean floor 1. Understood this part? So in the ocean floor 1, what will happen? In the ocean floor 1, as this uh, volcanic eruption will take place or not? So this ocean floor that you see here, it is moving towards the uh, mantle, it is getting molten and the magma which is generating because of your convection, it is moving towards your ocean floor 1. 
so what will happen in the ocean floor one in the ocean floor one we will have volcanic eruptions along the whole plate because this magma is trying to intrude into the uh, ocean floor one right so therefore across the ocean floor we will see volcanic eruptions understood this point so this is called as a so these volcanic eruptions that you see here are called as arcs which will in turn result in formation of islands which are also called as your island arcs okay you will understand if you look into this diagram again as the ocean floor crust that is the ocean floor loaded with sediment subducts after reaching 100 km it melts in the asthenosphere forming the magma where is asthenosphere asthenosphere is in the mantle right so what will happen to this magma this magma under buoyant force will move upward and cause volcanic eruption on the ocean floor in this case it will be ocean floor one right such volcanic landforms will form a chain of volcanic islands and these volcanic islands in turn will result in formation of island archipelagos now look into this diagram carefully this is the pacific ocean now remember that this pacific ocean is moving towards your eurasian plate or towards the uh, towards the uh, this continental mass or this continental lithosphere of asia or the eurasian plate so as the ocean floor is moving towards the continent floor which one is denser your pacific ocean floor is denser right because ocean floor is always denser so as it is moving towards this area what will happen it will result in the ocean floor subducting under the asian continental floor as a result of this what do we get here we get a chain of volcanic mountains right or a chain of volcanic or islands or which are also called as a island archipelagos example we have the Aleutian islands we have the Kuril we have Japan we have Solomon islands we have the Philippines we also have the Java Sunanda I hope you understood this point right so what is happening uh, this lithosphere this lithos uh, this oceanic crust is moving below going towards your mantle it is uh, getting molten magma which is generating will result in formation of island arcs or volcanic arcs or island archipelagos understood this point fine and what are the examples it will be your illusion japan uh, solomon islands etc so after the o uh, oo collision in the next logical sequence of collision we have the oc collision now what happened in the previous case in the previous case l1 o1 l2 o2 right so what was happening this o2 moved below o1 and got completely melted so as it was moving towards each other this o2 ocean floor that you see here what will happen it will completely move below o1 right so as a result of this we will get a structure of this kind this is c1 this is c1 here we have o1 and this that you see here uh, c1 uh, sorry the o2 it will completely move below o1 right so in the next logical sequence what will the structure look like it will look like this we will have a c1 we will have o1 then we will have c2 this is c2 meaning what this ocean floor o2 that you have seen in the previous collision that is the oo collision what was happening the o2 floor completely moved below your o1 floor understood this point as a result of this next kind of interactions is happening between what it is happening between o1 and c2 that is an ocean plate and a continental plate and hence the term oc collision understood so once the denser of the ocean floor completely subducts the next collision is between the ocean and the continental crust that is your o1 and c2 this kind of convergence give rise to extensive mountain systems now how do we get mountain systems very very easy to understand so in this sequence what will happen ocean floor is denser so now this ocean floor o1 will move below your c2 because oceans are always denser so because this, this what is happening a collision is happening or not collision between o1 and c2 that is your trench areas because of this collision what will happen both the ocean floor and the continent c2 will break and result in collection of debris in the margins of c2 o1 and c2 is meeting because of which your what because of this collision it will re result in breakage of both o1 and c2 and this will result in collection of sediments in your margins of c2 
Now, as the C1 keeps on moving towards C2, and as C2 is moving towards C1 and O1, these debris will keep on collecting, and as a result of this, what will happen? These debris at one point of time rises to uh, up to so much of height that it moves above the sea level. Understood this? This debris, so as the C1 is moving towards C2, this debris will keep on collecting in the margins of C2. And finally, we will get a structure which is above the sea level and these are called as your mountains of the world. For example, if you look at Rockies and Andes, Rockies and Andes, where are they found? Rockies and Andes, Rockies are found in your North America, Andes is found in your South America. This is the reason why your Rockies and Andes are found in your margins of the continents. This is North America, below North America, we have South America, here we have the Rockies. Here we have the Andes. This is the reason why we find Rockies and Andes in the margins of the continents. That is margins of continent C2. Understood? So this is first phenomena. Now the next thing it states that the process is similar to OO collision. But only difference is in the place of islands. We get the formation of the mountains. Right? So in this case what is happening? Will we have volcanoes or not? This is a very very important question. Question. Will we have volcanoes? Yes, we will have volcanoes in this case. Why? Because if you look into this diagram, O1 is moving below C2, right? Because of this, what is happening? O1 will go to the mantle or not. So once it is going into the mantle, what is happening? O1 is getting uh, melted. So magma will now intrude where? It will intrude in your C2. That is the continental plate. Now if you look into this diagram, what is happening? This uh, ocean floor, as it moves below the asthenosphere, it melts and causing forming volcanic arc. Therefore, in OC collision, we will see evidences of volcanic eruptions in the mountains. That is your Rockies and Andes. Understood this part? Fine. So, when ocean and the continent plates collide, the ocean plate will move below, forming a trench along the boundary. Trenches are the areas we have already discussed what trenches are, right? Like OO collision, magma will move upward, causing volcanic eruption in the continental crust. Like this, volcanic arc has been formed, right? So, after the O1 ocean floor completely subducts under the uh, C2 continent, what is the next type of logical sequence of collision we will have? We will have the CC collision. We will have the CC collision, right? So, uh, what was happening? This was C1. This was O1. O1 was moving below C2. As O1 completely subducts, the next type of collision that we will have is your C C collision or C1 C2 collision, hence the term continent continent collision. So after both the ocean floor is subducted, the final convergence will take place between the continental crust. In most cases, neither the plate subducts or even if one plate subducts, the subduction is very very less because subduction takes place when subduction will take place only in areas where there is a difference in your density, right? Ocean floor was much more denser compared to the continents. Therefore, what was happening? Therefore the continent uh, ocean floor was uh, subducting but in this case there is no uh, ocean floor right therefore the density of both the continents are almost similar therefore in this case there is no subduction and if there is no subduction will there be volcanic eruption why was there volcanic eruption ocean floor going to the mantle uh, then it is moving out as magma magma intrusion into the lithospheric plate and, and volcanic eruptions right but in this case since there is no subduction taking place no subduction is taking place therefore what can we say in this case we will have no volcanic eruption fine understood okay now this point is very very important out of all the forces oo collision oc collision then having the cc collision out of all these the strongest of the convergent force or compressive force is your cc collision understood now these areas are devoid of volcanic eruption we have already talked about because there is no subduction of ocean floor in this part right as the continents collide huge compressive forces will develop resulting in formation of huge chain of fold mountains between the continents for example we, it will have formation of the himalayas the atlas mountains in the africas and then we'll have the urals as well fine understood so rockies and andes formed because of your oo collision oc collision himalayas and atlas I have been formed because of your CC collision. Understood? Then the last type of collision that we get, 
is called as your transform boundary now what is a trans transform boundary so till now we have to talk talk talked about two different kinds of interactions one plates moving away from each other and another where the plates are moving towards each other but in this scenario of transform boundary these plates are moving past each other understood they are neither moving away from each other neither moving towards each other but rather they are moving in this direction that means it is sliding past each other right so two plates are sliding past against each other in this area we will have no destruction of the landform or no construction of the landform but we will have only deformation now in divergent boundary is also called as a what areas of creativeness because why because ocean floor was being created right but in case of your uh, convergent boundary it is also called as a destructive boundary why because destruction of ocean floor is taking place destruction of continents is taking place therefore we can say that uh, divergent boundary leads to constructive features whereas uh, what do i say uh, wherever the continents are converging or wherever the lithosphere is converging we will say there is destruction taking place all right but in case of transform boundary what is happening in case of transform boundary there is neither creation nor destruction but there is only deformation example you will see this kind of boundaries in the mid oceanic ridges as well as in the saint andreas falls now always remember that in areas where we will have presence of transform boundaries we will have earthquakes always remember that wherever there is a plate boundary inter interaction or wherever the plates are meeting there will always be earthquakes fine so in this class what we did talk about we talked about the lithosphere what a lithosphere is made up of and how we divide the lithosphere into continents oceans and combination and mostly the lithospheric plates are a combination of both of them after talking about the lithosphere we also talked about the different kinds of plate boundaries the first kind of boundary that we had is your divergent boundary which is also called as a constructive boundary because your ocean flows are getting uh, formed then we have the uh, convergent boundary or destructive boundaries where we have uh, under these three different kinds of interactions oo collision then we have the oc collision and then we have the cc collision right and after this we have also talked about the transform boundary where the plates are neither moving towards each other or away from each other but rather they are uh, sliding past uh, sliding past each other right fine so i hope you understood the topic of plate tectonics theory and how it is an improvement over your continental drift theory and in the next class we shall delve into another topic which is your interiors of the earth so stay tuned to scholars for more such content